But if you leave yourself in your current condition and carry on doing what you're doing and don't change any of your habits, eventually you are going to need yeah, a cure. And you have to remember, prevention is always better than a cure. And that's what, and this is how, a conversation with the doctor, a conversation with the health specialist, a conversation with a dietitian. This is how it's meant to go. They're meant to point you not to not to the um, not to the chemical shop where you buy um, protein shakes and this and that and this and that and this and that. Ask yourself: the most muscliest mammal on the face of this planet is a gorilla. You never see a gorilla drinking um, protein shakes. You know, they say pile up on meat. You never see a gorilla piling up on meat. They say pile up on, um, on, um, uh, you name it, yeah? You never see a gorilla doing any of these. In fact, the gorilla is, in other words, um, mainly a herbivore. What's a herbivore? It's like a vegan. Yeah? But only eat, um, what do you call it, um, herbs and trees and, and vegetation. So how, how, logically, how does it get bigger than, than all the men who like, um, what's his name? The, uh, one of the biggest bodybuilders in the world, yeah? Listen, do you know how much protein shakes he takes? His farts, his wife can't stand it. It's because of the money she's there. I swear to you, look at his belly. Poking out like listen, it's not healthy. They they have so many things. So utterly they look like a good specimen, but inside they're not. You see what I mean? But you see the gorilla, utterly they look strong, muscly, and they are inside they are also healthy. So how do they, and they don't go to the gym, so how do they do it? It's all in the science of the, of, of, of the structure of the gorilla. Listen, the creator, whoever you think the creator is, yeah, all he did yeah, was two things. He made the gorilla very hairy, one. And two, yeah, he made the gorilla, get this, it, he, it, he used Two skins. You see you, you stand up straight. Well, behind the knees of the gorilla, yeah? The skin and the tendons that's there has been cut short. Simple. It's shorter than it should be. Why? It's to prevent it from standing up straight. And it's that with all apes. It's like that with all apes. It's to prevent them from standing up straight. But why? Because they were, they were still meant to walk on all fours, regardless. Only the human walks on twos and has hands. Even the chicken who walks on twos doesn't have hands that work like the human. So it has to bow down and eat from the floor with its beak. But the gorilla, the gorilla, how does it get so big? Watch this. That skin and that tendon, that short, doesn't allow it to stand straight. So it's bent at the knees. Now, please stand and bend your knees. Immediately, you're going to see that the muscles yeah, on your thighs have tensed. Now, notice that the gorilla also doesn't walk on its back leg. It walks on its front hind. So now, stand up on your toes, yeah? You're going to notice that your cow's muscles and the front of your, of, your, of your leg and your thigh muscles are tensed. They're activated. So the gorilla is constantly in active state. The gorilla has been put constantly in the state of exercise. Why? Because it lives in the jungle and it's meant to live in the jungle and it's very hard there. But 
through the gorillas' ups and downs, climbing, climbing mountains. If you've noticed, gorillas are normally really high up on the mountains. Yeah, these big animals show so high up on the mountains. To climb the mountains, they use all four. Now, when you're doing press-ups, what do you do? You put all fours down. Technically, you're like the gorilla on the floor stretched out. And what are you doing when you're doing press-ups? Your upper body, your chest. Well, the gorilla is constantly doing that just to walk. If a gorilla is 35 years old and has walked 350 million miles, the gorilla has been exercising for 35 years for 350 miles. So the gorilla, yeah, keeps building muscles by breaking them and building them and breaking them and feeding them with the right food. From there, the gorilla gets nourishment, um, um, nutrients, um, anything that they sell in those shops, the gorilla gets. But its muscles are naturally strong and do not wither and water up two weeks without the gym. It's all in your understanding. It's all in your understanding. I can show you how to exercise without moving an inch, without lifting anything, but yet you will get stronger. It's all in your breathing and the time at which you breathe. It makes the air you breathe medication and medication always heals you and makes you stronger. If your heart is not strong, you, you are not strong. That's the difference between a muscly person who's scared of a tiny, skinny, little person. It's all in the heart. And in Cree they say, Akuma. Akuma, it fights for you. They call it that, that which fights for you. If your muscles are big, it is not called that which fights for you, although you use it to fight. But if your heart is big, it is called that which fights for you. But what does it fight for? It fights for life. It fights for everything that is. Everything that is is let's create jobs yeah that are meaningful let's create jobs that um the other day i read up on the word because get this i remember one stage at university yeah man i was confused my god i was confused you know i was confused i had to write a dissertation get this so you you start school at four yeah, and then you go to um, nursery, secondary school, junior, se oh, sorry, junior secondary school, senior secondary school, and, and in my case, um, school, sixth form, college, then university. Yeah, and at each level, they're teaching you different things. Some of them are four years, some of them are seven years, but all together, you spend about 18 years of your life, yeah, to reach university. And when you reach university, you know you are at a milestone of your education. And the milestone is all concluded. Listen on. The milestone of your education is all concluded under one heading. Dissertation. 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 So I said, what is dissertation? And I was extremely disappointed in myself. Do you know why? Because that was the first question I should have asked myself when I was faced with dissertations that were confusing me. And the dictionary simply told me that a dissertation is simply a long essay. And you spend all that time in anticipation of writing a long essay that, that, listen, that disqualifies your experience and only qualifies 
what someone else has deducted and has been accepted education but when I looked at the word knowledge knowledge said to acquire knowledge is through experience or education we're ignoring experience and we're putting everything into education we're putting our lives down into education creating debts because we 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 believe there's something there for us 18 years to write a dissertation, a long essay. And for this, some are in debt, 64,000. Some are in debt, 100,000. Some are in debt. You understand what I'm saying? I know because I speak from experience. One day they will ask me to pay. But I'm going to ask them. What am I paying for? Because I came to education to make something of myself. I came to education to learn how to invent. How to change. How to change the norm for the better. How to change the old for the new. How to be creative. But I can tell you that education didn't give me any of those. They didn't. And, and we can prove it by using my coursework, my examination papers, my everything. They got it. Evidence. Because when I finished, I didn't become what, what, what I had aspired to become. But if I was stupid, I wouldn't have made it to university. That's what you have to remember. I would have dropped off halfway, but I didn't. I said here yeah, that Portsmouth University needs to look at my work as my dissertation, as my long essay. And they need to remark my dissertation because they totally ignored the laws of knowledge. The laws of knowledge is that knowledge is acquired through experience or education. Education is part of my experience, but education it's not all knowledge. They ignored that. But they are a learning institution. Therefore, they should never ignore anything that is learned. As knowledge puts it, through experience or through education. I'm telling you. There is only one game in this life worth playing and that's the game of healing. And, and it's not worth playing for the sake of money because then it drives you down the wrong route because money brings in greed and greed makes you cut corners to save money so you can have more. But the healing in, in the sense of satisfaction of one's life Oh yeah, we are our own healers. If we took time to look into that which we have been given to use to heal ourselves, then we will, we will be better placed to know who we are. The doctor sees a million people every year, sometimes in a day. The doctor won't even remember his first patient when he gets home. He's too tired. But I bet you any money, listen carefully to me, I bet you any money, any doctor that has ever, ever come in contact with me, remembers me. 
Why? Because my questioning got them to change medication and say, actually, let's give you this instead. Because my question got them yeah, to call me later after I had left with the information they gave me and told me to come back for a new consultation. Because my questioning got the doctor to change the treatment using radiation. And what was the question? It was simple, doctor. So you're saying this treatment, I need it. He said, yeah. And you're saying that the elements used is radioactive. And he said, yeah. And this means, but radioactivity, doesn't that cause cancer? He said, yeah, but we only use a tiny little bit. And he said, the possibilities and the chances of contracting cancer from this bit is slim. You see the word slim is a number. It means it can be 0.0001%. And from experience, I know. From the things I've experienced, when I tell people, they don't believe it. Why don't they believe it? Because I'm part of that no, 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 1% that bullshit happens to. Listen, everyone has a disease or everyone has some kind of ailment. So I got one on my forehead. I went to the doctors to find out what it is. Yeah, some people come up with, oh, um, this, that, that, that. I came up with liar myoma tosis. Listen to Liar Myoma Tosis. You see Liar Myoma Tosis. You see England. They've only met two people that have ever had it. They know about it, but there is not that much research. Because research, you need people who have it in order to research. There's only been two people who've had it. This liar on my own mitosis. But get this. It is a common thing. Though. Yeah. It is in women. Listen carefully. It is an ovarian, um, ovarian, um, what do you call it? Um, thing. It's something that women normally get in their ovaries. And every now and then, it will pop up on their backs or on their face or somewhere. Women normally get this. Well, I have liar my <laughs> liar my omatosis. I am not a woman. It is very rare. So you see, when I tell you that when you when you when you're calculating the word slim, it's so slim. But you have to look at your experience. Slim things normally happen to you. So I said to the doctor, Doc, is there another way that we can do this, achieve the same results without using radiation? I would prefer that. He said, yeah. There's the water treatment where we pump water into you and we take the picture. And this is me, what, just water? He said, yeah, just treated water. No radiation, no radiation. Would you get the same quality results and make a judgment from that? He said, yeah. I said, okay, let's go for that instead. Why do you think he did that? It's because the radioactive part of it is very expensive. And the organizations that supply this they sell, and he, the doctor, he's a marketing salesman. Yes, it's part of the greed that has come into the healing game. Profitization of another man's, you know, whatever. But get this, if he sells that treatment instead, the NHS has to pay a lot of money to private companies. 99.9 .9 to 100% of the time, 
the doctors who prescribe the medication are on some kind of bonus commission system. Some kind of bonus commission system. And only when you get an adverse reaction from it would they prescribe another. But in the beginning, if it's cancer, they will prescribe the most lucrative one to their pockets. Your health. Your health is best in your hands. The more you know about your health, not health, but your health, because your health is specific to you, the better chance you have of fighting COVID-19. So, 11.20 p.m. After everything that is being offered at the body shop that I've already told you about, I don't see, I don't see why this is not feasible or why this is not the only thing that people should see. At the body shop, get this, we will have doctors Physicians, each body shop, at the real body shop, at the real body shop, each one, obviously, is in your locality. Is in your locality. But these doctors, yeah, we will have them trained, trained on preventative cure. Preventative cure. So you have your main doctor and you have to realize soon this is what's coming. Soon you won't just have access to your doctor. You can't just walk to your doctor. They're taking away that system. You're feeling really bad. You need to go and see the doctor. But yet the doctor is on Skype telling you you're okay, you'll be all right. That's what's coming. But now here comes. The real body shop, the supermarket of groceries and all tools and implements to deal with your groceries. And here, your customer, you come in, you're seeking advice, you're feeling unwell. You see the way you earn points now, yeah? The way you earn points. It won't be much for you to earn points to get a full checkup from a professional doctor. Blood test, urine test, sperm check, everything. Why? Because the profits, the profits will come out of your grocery shop. It will. The owners of this, of this enterprise will make enough money To be able to offer back to their to their customers, and and anyway, it's a health shop. So make it professional. The only way to make a health shop professional is to put doctors in there, physicians in there, dietitians in there, professionals. Ones that, that you can say, okay, when you go to the doctor, the doctor will refer you to that. Ones that you trust. But all these people will be practicing in preventative cure, which is before you even get there. So imagine, imagine a visit to the doctor that goes like this. Doctor, I'm ill. What's wrong? Um, I'm getting strong headaches. My stomach is aching. I keep getting the runs, this, that, that, and that. Okay, the doctor sits down and talks to you and takes your samples and whatnot and whatnot. But for the time being, the doctor says, please follow me. Yeah, the doctor brings you to the shop floor. You said your head was aching. You said your stomach was running. And your stomach was all running. Now the doctor takes you to the natural fruits, to the natural enzymes 
that could help ease this pain. So you and your doctor, you go on a you go on a little walk because you booked the appointment. You booked it. You go on a little walk, a natural walk through the real body shop. And he tells you, okay, change your diet a bit. Or oh, oh, the doctor goes, okay, you know what? This is what I recommend. Go and see the dietitian. Immediately, you go and see the dietitians. They then look at the doctor's notes, look at the, um, your test results, and they go, okay, that's, there's your blood group. Um, let's go here, try these, try that, do this, do that. It's all natural. It's not gonna, you understand what I'm saying? This, that, that, that. If anything we suggest, yeah, you're not sure, you hold, but you take our script. So for example, you came in, we tested your blood, we tested your, your urine, all based, listen, all based on the profits we get from you continuously shopping with us. Not from buying any extra insurance or anything, all based on that. And we give you a diagnosis. You can take this diagnosis before you even do anything we say, we recommend you do that to your actual doctors because legality. And if your doctor confirms it's right, yeah, or that it can work, you can go ahead and do it. If your doctor says bullshit, going to nature will kill you, then you say fuck it, I'm not doing it. You see what I mean? We will have dentists in there called tooth care. We will have eye specialists in there. No, 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 this is not. Listen, they will help you with minimum work. Yeah, but they're not going to cure the blind. The idea is, is for you to come because you say your eyesight is failing a bit. The beginnings of it. Yeah, and they say, okay, cool. Let's see your diet. Yeah, your diet is not good from, from a natural point of view. You're not accessing these things, which are all good for the eyes. So let's start with that and see how that goes. But go and see your doctor and see what your doctor says. Still. So an eye specialist, ear specialist, because we have natural, natural things for ears. You know, people have smelly breath, halitosis. Whoever deals with that, even pregnancy care. Pregnancy care. You can book an appointment at your groceries, at the Royal Body Shop. It's a new age, it's a new dawn, it's a new beginning. Your doctor should not be separated from that which gives you health, your food. So at the raw body shop, we will save you time, we will save you money, we will save you effort, we will save your life, simply by bringing everything that deals with life into one location. So when you enter that location, you know you're in safety. Right now when you enter a doctor, all you see is clinical, all you see is you're going to get hurt. But if you entered through the raw body shop, all you're going to see is herbs, fruits, this, that, that, that. The intake of medication is different. We don't put it directly into your bloodstream because we are not fully aware of the goodness we have put into our vaccines. But we know nature, nature, if we feed you the right nature, nature will take exactly what it needs to fix the job. So before we get to there, that's what the shop is about. So you, you will still have your Morrisons and your Tesco's and everything and they will still be on the old system and this and that. They will take your money and they will give it them back. And when coronavirus came here, what did they do? What did they do? Did they call every member holding cards with many, many points and say, 
Because coronavirus is an emergency, you have been a loyal customer to us. You, you, you. We are closing the shop and anyone with a card, a loyal card, will have a different queue and will have access to more. No, they didn't. You were struggling just like everyone else. At the Royal Body Shop, because it is you who keep it running, they say, listen, I told my friend to me, I said, listen, um, they said, yeah, uh, the coronavirus thing, yeah, that, oh, this, that, and I said, listen, it's nothing new, it's happened before, it's always happened. Watch, they say coronavirus, stay, stay safe, lockdown, okay, and I said, get this, um, when they were looking to kill Moses, they say, stay in your houses, yeah, and stay safe, lockdown, and then they came right and started killing people, easier to find, and then I said, when they were looking for Jesus, they said, go back to your places and stay close to your houses and we'll come and see you. But then the Bible, fictional or not, because some people don't believe it, yeah? Fine. But fictional or not, says, then God told the parents, run here, run back to your people where they're all the same color as you and you can blend in. And they did that. But they always started to stay in. And then another time, um, God told Noah, build a boat. And everyone that gets on the boat will live. Everyone that doesn't get on the boat will die. And another time, God said to him, Moses, take red paint, or sorry, take goat's blood, blood red, yeah? And make a cross on the doors of the people that are with us, yeah? And after that, when death comes, it won't visit them. But all the doors left unmarked, when death comes, it will visit them. So, wear the mask, stay home, and when Corona comes, it won't catch you. Xylophone music. Be a quiet, 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 be a qu